My name is Omar Abdel Wahab. I'm a medical doctor and MD, and I work at Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center in New York City, New York. Dr. Abdel Wahab's lab is studying therapeutic targeting of spisosomal mutant myeloid leukemias. Dr. Abdel Wahab is a contributing editor for The Hematologist. The spliceosome is a multi-protein complex, a big group of proteins plus RNAs, whose function, they work as an enzyme, okay? So that's a group that removes pieces of RNA from premature mRNA to make the mature mRNA that we need to make proteins. In 2011, it was discovered that very commonly, patients with certain types of leukemia, such as myelodysplastic syndromes, myeloproliferative neoplasms, chronic lymphocytic leukemia, a large proportion of those patients have very specific mutations in components that, of uh, the spiciosome. And um, since that time, we've been trying to understand the biology of those mutations and to understand if they can be used as therapeutic targets to treat leukemias with those mutations. It's been known for about five years now that splicing mutations always occur in a heterozygous state. You have one mutant and one wild type. And when you see that pattern, it makes you think that it might be a gain of function activity. But what we've learned also is that the mutant requires a wild type for the cells to exist. And so removing the wild type allele or blocking wild type function in any way greatly paralyzes the mutant protein and causes those cells to preferentially die. So the idea here is we think we can manipulate wild type splicing in the splice mutant cells and preferentially lead to their death. The drug we're using currently is what we call a tool compound, meaning something that exists to use as a tool to build better ones that actually can be given to people. E7107 is the tool compound that blocks the spliceosome. It blocks wild type splicing as well as mutant splicing proteins, we believe. But the idea is that cells that harbor a spliceosome mutation are preferentially sensitive to the effects of this drug. And so we've tested this in a number of models, um, murine-derived, mouse-derived leukemias, but also patient-derived leukemias with and without spiceosome mutations. And we find that in vivo, in the treating of the animals uh, themselves directly, those leukemias that do not bear a spicy mutation, they actually don't care if the drug is present or not. They're not killed by the drug. In contrast, those same leukemias, when they contain that point mutation, the spice mutation, a very specific mutation, they all of a sudden become sensitized to the drug and the leukemias melt away. As a therapeutic modality, the big question is the safety of these drugs because we know that this is an essential process for any cell. And there are some cell types in our bodies which may be very, very sensitive to this kind of blockade of normal activity. We don't see toxicity in a preclinical model, but there are many examples of drugs which were not toxic in a preclinical setting, but were toxic when given to people in unexpected ways. We don't plan to use this drug or take this drug into clinical use, but actually new forms of this drug, which are given actually orally, that's the hope to take that compound into clinical use. And it may be structurally very different than the prior drug. So safety is the main concern, but there have been some early studies done. Now this may not work in people, but the preclinical data and the rationale is very strong. Um, and genetically, it's very strong. We know that those mutant cells require the wild type to exist, and without it, it cannot exist. So I expect that that'll be the case in people, but again, there's this question of safety and all these other issues. Lots of things have worked before it got into people, but they didn't translate to people. So that's the question. I think the thought right now is that there's going to be a consortium effort through the MDS Research Consortium that will probably run the uh, phase one clinical trial of this new compound. That's the thought at the moment. And the hope is we will use this information to lead to actually treating human beings using this strategy in the near future.